Hey guys, welcome back. Professor Xperia here. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about some changes that need to come to Halo Infinite before or on its launch. So as it stands right now, Halo Infinite is technically in beta. So by that, we can kind of expect that when it fully launches on December 8th, when it goes from beta to 1.0, we should get a decent day one patch, or at least we'd hope, right? And today I want to talk about some things that I think should slash kind of need to be in that day one patch. Okay, first off, we have custom games, and custom games are not in a great state in this game right now, and that honestly feels even worse given that we don't have Forge. The fact that we don't have Forge makes the absence of features or the bugginess of features in customs even worse, and I'd like to see a lot of this stuff fixed by day one. One of the glaring issues that I noticed is that there's no way to select which weapon and vehicle set spawns on a map, and given that the maps have a degree of like randomness in which weapons and vehicles spawn, that can be really annoying if you want a certain vehicle or weapon on the map. Like, for example, I tried to get the chopper to spawn on Behemoth, I restarted the game seven times, and the chopper still didn't spawn. I kept getting the ghost variant of the map, and the Banshee variant, but I never got the chopper variant, which I think goes without saying, that's pretty annoying. Halo 2 and 3 had this option where you could select the weapon set on the map, so you could select duels or melee weapons or snipers or whatever, and I think a feature like that for both weapons and vehicles in Infinite Customs would go a long way whilst we wait for Forge, because obviously when Forge comes out we can do that all ourselves, right, it's not an issue, but in the meantime, whilst you wait for Forge, that would help a lot. They could also just add map variants as well, they could add like Behemoth Banshee version or Behemoth Chopper version, just a way for us to select each version of the map would be very helpful. Right, so for this next bit I want to give a massive thank you to iSpiteful, who is somebody who knows considerably more about custom games than me. I've not really played much custom since Halo 3 to be honest, but his entire channel is dedicated to it, so if you want to sub to him, link is in the description, go and check him out. But I want to give him a thank you as well for helping out with this part of the video because he helped me gather a bunch of really bad issues with customs right now to bring to light. And they are as follows. The game can crash sometimes when you're loading into a custom game. Changing game type settings doesn't always work, and even if it says the settings have changed in the menu, when you load into the game, they often aren't changed. And then, by extension, saving game types doesn't really work properly either. Oftentimes, when you save the settings and replay them, they're just reset back to default, not the settings that you saved them as, which is really annoying. There's no way to enable player collision in customs, which is a problem right now, but I can see that being even more of a problem for custom games when Forge releases. There's no way to set a number of lives in any game type, so you can't do like one life slayer or two life CTF or anything. There's no way to disable one hit backsmacking, nor melee damage overall. You can turn melee damage down to 10%, but you can't disable it at all. The party leader can now change people's teams themselves, which is actually a fantastic addition, but the player can just instantly change back teams, so it doesn't really work very well. And this means that Honor Rule's infection, given that we don't have any official infection mode in this game yet, is even harder to do than it previously was. There's no way to set weapon spawns to random. The only way to do that now is by playing Fiesta, which is no longer like a version of Slayer. It's its own sub-game mode. So if you want to play Free For All Fiesta, or CTF Fiesta, or Oddball Fiesta, there's no way to do that. And you also can't set what equipment a player spawns with. Those are just some of what I believe to be the many, many issues with custom games. Uh, customs are not in a good state in this game whatsoever right now, and I really hope that a lot of these issues can be ironed out by launch, because with no Forge, we're going to have to rely on custom game settings a lot for the next couple of months, and uh, if they're not working properly, that's not great. And on the topic of custom games, the amount of game modes right now in Halo Infinite is kind of light, there aren't that many. At the very least, I think 343 need to add stuff like free-for-all, SWAT, multi-team, team snipers, for example. Things that are like natural variations of existing modes, like Slayer, not completely new modes. Those things at the very least should be in the game. Uh, that said, we do know that there are more modes that are either in the game files or have been in trailers previously that aren't out yet. Like, for example, this revive mode that we saw in, I believe, the multiplayer launch trailer. Hopefully that comes soon. I do think that content like this should be available in custom games, even if it's not in the matchmaking rotation. I think that stuff like this should always be available in custom games, regardless of whether or not it's been officially launched in matchmaking yet, because 
I mean, there's no reason not to, right? There's no infection again, which really hurts after Halo 5. This is now the second Halo game in a row to not launch with what is the backbone of custom games. You think of the amount of different customs that come from infection, that are offshoots of infection, that we can't make in this game right now. It really sucks that we have to rely on honor rules for this stuff again for the second game in a row. I know it's not easy to just make a new game mode, right? But when you boil infection down, all it is is a mode of Slayer where if player is killed by sword or if player is killed by enemy, then player switches team to enemy team. Like, I'm not a game dev or anything, but when you boil it down, that's kind of the simplest form of it. And I feel like just an option like team switching on death in Slayer would help that out a lot whilst we wait for the official infection mode. I'm also really hoping that in addition to infection, other essentials like King of the Hill and Assault are added soon because there's currently no way to do Griff Ball in this game at all. We're really lacking in modes and I'd love it if just a few of these could be added before launch. I'd also like to see some fan favorite modes like Regicide or VIP, Extraction, Ricochet, Headhunter, etc. be added to the game, but they aren't as immediate of an issue as stuff like infection and assault. Those things would really appreciate them being there for launch. And kind of on the same note as this, another of the big issues right now with Infinite Multiplayer is the lack of playlists. This game really needs more playlists. One of the biggest issues with Infinite right now is just the lack of variety when it comes to matchmaking. I mean, right now the playlist offering is pretty pathetic, right? We have three standard playlists, one bot playlist, and one rotational playlist. And that's it. Two socials, one ranked, not a fan of that at all. I mean, this game is cross-platform free to play. Any issues that they may have had in previous games with creating too many playlists and splitting the already low population between them and causing long matchmaking times shouldn't be an issue. This game is free to play on two platforms with cross-play. There's no reason to limit the population that are playing this game to like three playlists. Low population isn't a problem anymore. Embrace the higher population, give them tons of options to match make with. I also think as well that greater playlist variety could actually alleviate some of the issues with the kind of slight lack of game modes in the game because it offers people more ways to play the same content. Like, for example, CTF on Aquarius plays very differently in social to ranked, right? That alone allows you to play the map and mode differently. And I think adding more playlists to make the most of that would help alleviate the content issues. It's a temporary fix whilst they work on more content, but at least it's something. I've been saying this for the last six years, but I'm gonna say it again. Halo 3's playlist offering and variety was absolutely perfect. So perfect, in fact, that 343 even chose to copy and paste it into Halo 5 a few years ago. So clearly they agree that it's great as well. One group of social playlists, one group of ranked playlists, and then one group of kind of rotational special playlists was a great way to do it. And honestly, my dream scenario with Infinite's playlists are that they're split in that way as follows. We have a ranked category that has Team Slayer, Free For All, Team Objective, Team Doubles, Head to Head, 1v1s, Team Snipers, SWAT, and HCS settings. Then we have a social category that has Social Slayer, Free For All, Social Objective, Big Team Battle, Infection, and Action Sack. And then the special category with stuff like any rotational playlists, emphasis on playlists, plural please, not just one, Griff Ball, and then any other like fun community modes. I think that's a great way to create more variety. And like I said, the population in this game is not low. We don't need to worry about splitting the population between however many playlists embrace the high population, give them more variety in matchmaking, and I guarantee more people will start playing this game. And also, I think broadly speaking, again, I'm no game dev, just quick disclaimer out the way, but I think broadly speaking, these changes wouldn't be that hard to add before launch, I don't want to say. Adding more playlists and stuff, I, hopefully it wouldn't be that hard. I really hope that's something they can get by, by launch, because the game definitely needs it. Okay, so before we continue, a quick word from today's sponsor keeps. So this one's for all the fellas out there, right? As somebody who loves his hair as much as I do, to the point where I even tried to relive my emo phase semi-successfully over the summer, the thought of hair loss really concerns me. Two out of three guys experience some form of male pattern baldness by age 35, and the best way to prevent that is by acting while you still have hair left, and that's where Keeps comes in. Keeps offers generic, affordable versions of FDA-approved medication for hair loss that allows you to be treated at home, where a licensed doctor will review your information online and then recommend the right treatment plan for you. 
and then it's shipped directly to your door every three months. You can also message your Keeps Doctor 24-7 with any concerns or questions that you might have. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, then go to keeps.com slash hiddenxperia or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash hiddenxperia to ensure that a second emo phase is never out of the question. Okay then, another one of the biggest problems with this game right now is the theatre mode. Theatre mode is not in a good state in this game. It's been pretty much on a downward trend since Halo 4. Thankfully, Few 443 have tried to avert that in this game by adding a timeline to theatre where, where you can see like on the time bar where you got a kill, where you got like a killing spree, like a medal or something, which is a really cool addition. In fact, that's an addition that I've wanted to see since Black Ops 2 added it in Call of Duty in 2012. So it's great to see that finally make its way into Halo's theatre, but sadly the rest of the mode is just awful. I mean, where do I even begin? The controls are so buggy and awkward. Switching perspectives, switching between players, skipping forwards and backwards through the timeline are all just so unintuitive. Maybe that's something that we'll get used to over time, but when I tried to use theater mode of the day, I was having an absolute nightmare. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. The HUD toggle controls are awful as well. There's no way to have the HUD look like it actually does in game. You either have to A, have the full theatre HUD with timeline and the legend and the player HUD visible, B, have just the standard player HUD but with the legend in the top right so it doesn't look like it does in game, or C, no HUD whatsoever. There's no in between. There's no way to make theatre mode gameplay look like actual in-game gameplay, which is really annoying. So if I want to go back and record a cool clip that I got in matchmaking, I either have to completely disable the HUD, so there's no shields, no ammo, no crosshair, nothing, or display the in-game HUD, but have the legend in the top right taking up like a quarter of the entire screen and getting in the way. I really feel for montages and machinima makers with this, because this is not good. When you're playing back footage, the animations are really buggy looking. They constantly skip frames, look really laggy, or just glitchy overall. It, the gameplay looks really bad when you go back and record it from a theatre perspective. The audio is completely messed up as well. I mean, it just randomly plays audio from another person's perspective. Like, just listen to this clip right here and you'll see what I mean. Oh, you're a menace with that scope. Confirmed. You are a... Walking apocalypse. Skewered. Perfect. Ammunition low. No scope. Irresistible force, meet object. Killing spree. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think it's meant to be doing that. I'm also hearing reports from other people as well that bookmarked films are just randomly vanishing. I'll be honest, that's not happened to me yet. It's kind of happened to me. I had a glitch of the day where I bookmarked a film and then just had no way to play it. There was no watch film option, it just wasn't there but I've not had any bookmarks vanish, but it's an issue, right? So say you go into matchmaking and you get a really cool game and you save it mid-session to go and record later once you've finished playing, but then you get to theatre and it's just vanished. You're not going to be very happy, are you, when your killing hair just gets deleted from the ether and nobody believes that you got it. Oh, Spyfall also told me that this can be an issue with custom game bookmarks as well, which is also an issue. Maybe this is a problem with the bookmark system as a whole and not just theatre and customs, but either way, I really hope that it's fixed for launch. Moving on, something that I would love to see added for launch is just some semblance of a progression system. I'm not expecting like a full massive military rank progression system to be made in two weeks obviously because that's ridiculous right but just something. Now I will say I've got a video coming out that is dedicated to this entire topic in a few days so I only want to briefly touch on it today but what I will say is that I really hope they can patch in some sort of progression system that's separate from the battle pass before launch although I do know that that's probably quite a big ask. Even if it's just getting XP for finishing a game that increases is a number next to your name, right? Literally anything is better than the nothing we have right now. In the future, I do really want to see military ranks, but more on that in a few days in a different video. And kind of on the same note, 
I want them to increase Battle Pass progression as well. Um, for launch, I really hope they increase the speed at which you progress through the Battle Pass. Given that right now, it's the only form of progression in the entire game, how slow it is to progress through just makes for a really miserable experience. Were it up to me, I'd increase the per game XP to 150 XP for a loss or a draw, and 300 XP for a win. That way, it still takes three wins and three losses, which is six total games, to go up one tier in the Battle Pass, which is still considerably slower than any of Halo's competitors right now. Fortnite, Warzone, etc. You go up a tier in like two or three games in those games. That's literally double that, right? So it's still pretty slow to take into account the fact that Battle Passes are permanent, but it's enough to make going up the tiers actually feel rewarding and satisfying and actually feel like you're progressing through something because right now I really don't feel like I'm progressing through anything. I'd also love to see Battle Pass XP granted on a per medal basis but I get that that's probably a little bit harder to implement and is very unlikely to be added before launch. And finally, something that I really want to see change that I guarantee isn't that hard to change and it's driving me insane is the friends list. Please 343, alphabetize the friends list. When I'm sorting through my friends list right now, the list of names isn't in alphabetical order, it's in some random order. So finding someone is such a nightmare. Please alphabetize the friends list and make it easier for us to invite our friends, I'm begging you. And so those are all the changes and additions that I'd like to see come to Halo Infinite before its official launch on December 8th. At least all the things that I want to see added that are feasible to be added, right? Obviously, 343 can't add, like, an entire, like, military rank progression system and, like, 17 new maps and 50 new modes in two weeks because, come on, <laughs> that's not possible, right? we got to be kind of reasonable here. So if there's anything that I left out of this list, let me know down below in the comments. I'm sure there is. I always forget stuff. So let me know down below. And with that said, I'm going to round this video out here. I want to give a massive thank you to Lehman0610 for becoming a new Primordial over on Patreon. Thank you very much, man. And also to everybody else who continues to support me over there. Thank you all so much. And thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. This is Professor Xperia signing out. And I'll catch you all in the next one.